Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. This is a weekly rundown of events, updates, and beautiful stuff happening within the Blender community, Blender Foundation, and Blender as an app. And of course, this week we do have a couple of cool things that you guys want to take a look at. Starting off, if you go over to the experimental branch right now and you check out the Mac section, you would now notice that within the Mac section, there is now a candidate for the ARM and also for Intel. So just in case you're thinking about working with Mac and you know, you're thinking about the compatibility for Metal, Blender is already right there right now. So just in case you have a brand new version of a Mac and it runs on Metal, you would be able to work and access Blender. Moving forward, the Asset Browser now has a huge project update. And this is actually one of those things that was talked about last week where they said there was gonna be a four day workshop that will be taking place remotely. And the whole idea here is to work on the Asset Browser design and also on the system just to target 3.0 release and right here we have a couple of things that you guys may want to take a look at previously before now we did have a conversation about the asset manager you know talked about what is an asset what does it mean how do you access these things how do you actually work with it was the life cycle the milestone all of that and of course we talked about the pose library the version 2 which we said is going to be coming over to blender 3.0 as it is going to be the first practical extension of the asset browser we looked at all of the tiny little and impressive updates and also we shared a couple of things about it and today we are seeing that this is going to a whole new height as the asset browser project update is right here so this is one of the first iterations for blender 3.0 and there's a couple of things to take out of this and of course right now there is a workflow demo and this workflow demo deals with four major parts the first one is creating editing using and also sharing and how these things work Work is very interesting of course right now they're saying this might not probably be the correct order but this works in a very interesting way first off you need to create this asset and they've actually made it in such an interesting way that you can now mark assets at any given point so you can now create assets on a different blender file save that blender file and then you can also edit those assets add tags if you would like to add tags to them and for assets that you like to edit, you can simply do that by clicking on the button by the property section and you can now edit these things. Now, to me, I think this is one of those reusability kind of feature, which would make a lot of sense, especially if you like to reiterate your assets and maybe you want to make copies and you want to go back and make changes to these things just to fit whatever project they're working on. I guess this might make a lot of sense. In terms of using the demo, which we're seeing right now shows us the using part where you can easily drag and drop things directly on your viewport. And this way, this would automatically place things with some sort of bounding box base snapping. Now, this is something that is currently not available in Blender as we speak right now, as I did go ahead to download 3.0 today's version and it is actually not there. So hopefully we'll be seeing this in the 3.0 beta, but right now this is actually something that we don't have. So the whole idea of this bounding box base snapping to me makes a lot of sense and it's going to make placing of objects on top of other surfaces super easy. So this is also one of those things that they're considering on you know making available to everyone as you can now easily create stuff edit those things place them however you choose and you can also share these files so right now as this project is going on they are still looking at the idea that this is an asset browser and not like a, an asset manager so you as the artist would be solely responsible for creating the asset managing this assets how you want but the asset browser in this case is being looked at from the point that it only manages the assets that you already have. So at this point, you can create as much custom libraries as you want and simply get them mounted within your preference. And so what happens right now is in terms of sharing, you can now make your own Blender file, which contains all the assets that you want, send it off to anyone and that person would be able to use it. So the idea here is to simply make it easier for people to share things across. You know, you can now create a set of assets directly in blender or probably import them and save them as assets save them into a blender file and you can share this with anyone so there's a long list of things that they're talking about about what they're building they're talking about you know the current scope and within what they're building they're looking at 
the asset view which we've already talked about when we looked at the post library version 2 there is also the asset system and at the same time there's the asset bundle so at this point they're looking at maybe getting a tiny asset that will be shipped when blender gets shipped or maybe just simply make it as a separate download that you can get within blender.org i kind of think that maybe one of the things that we might be getting with this might be the blend kit the blend kit could actually kick start maybe we can get a couple of assets from the blend kit kick starting the whole asset browser thing and following that there is the current scope which is what we're looking at right now and of course there is also the design basic so for those who like to read more about this maybe you want to get a grounded idea of all the things i'm going to put a link in the description that can bring you right here so that you can see how these things would actually make life easy and what they seem to pose or what they seem to present with the new release as this is going to be coming with blender 3.0 so you can also go through and take a look at some of the persons that attended the workshop and also some of the contributors and for those who would like to join the conversation there are a couple of persons right here within the comments so you can go through and join this so with all this said let's actually go ahead and take a look at something that is currently available in blender 3.0 the alpha so with blender 3.0 point zero the alpha opened right here you can see what we have so what we have here is a very simple scene let me just go ahead and take up that one and what we've done is if you go over to your edit go over to your preference you would notice that we just made a couple of cubes and then we just saved that somewhere you know within downloads and create a new custom path and just call this just cubes so with this if you simply close that and click on this button and go over to your asset browser and we click and drag this all the way up you would notice that we have this actually loading so once this is completely loaded we can now go ahead and start you know bringing things in so one thing to keep in mind is if you're considering working with the asset browser right now this is a good idea but for very simple stuff like this you can see how long it takes to actually load it so right now we have them all loaded you can see they're quite basic stuff and um, you can click and drag and just drop them around. This is what we have at this point. So you can now go ahead and click and drag things out, but the whole bounding box snapping doesn't exist with this one yet. So for those that are thinking about getting started with the asset browser, this is how you can get started with it. For example, let's say we choose to create a brand new asset right here. Instead of going over here, which is um, right here, right click, go over to ID data and mark your asset. You can easily do that from here right now so you can just simply right click from here and mark that and if you click on the cog where you get to see all the properties you would also notice that we don't have all the properties as we saw within the demo for sure you can go in and put some descriptions and add some tags but you can't actually select this object and start editing it at this point so with this said let's also go ahead and take a look at something that is available with the geometry node so the geometry node now has something that is pretty cool so if you go over to your geometry nodes you add the brand new geometry node if you hold down shift and tap a and type in the word delete you would now notice that we have a delete geometry. Now, this is pretty interesting. So you can now easily delete geometries and delete certain portions and delete groups and all that stuff. And to actually get this one started, if you simply go over to your edit, you can now select several parts. So in this case, I can select a part like this, select another one, and then we can go over here go over to the vertex group or go over to the face, you know, depending on what you want to do. Click on the plus sign, create a group and hit the word assign. So at this point, since we have this one as group, we can come to the selection and go over here and add that selection. You can notice what we have. So right now you can see what we have. We just ended up deleting those other points and have just one point. And if we click on invert, you can see we can invert this one right now so this is a very interesting update to see that we now have this available within blender and actually within the geometry nodes so you can even do some more crazy things so we can also go in here and make um, curves and convert our mesh to curve and you can see that right now as this looks cool and of course we can also go ahead and throw in a simple curve so let's just get a simple circle and drag that all the way down select this right here and we can even do some more stuff all right curves to become meshes and then we can click and add that right there and we already talked about the object how you can get an object info and we can link this all the way up here click right here link this all the way to that and you can start seeing some stuff and we already talked about how you can throw in a transform so you can actually load up a simple transform here load up a simple value and more like what you can do with houdini right now 
you can now start seeing some very interesting looks with Blender. So we can actually set this one all the way to one just to see what we have. And you can see we're beginning to create some very interesting looking objects and uh, some very interesting things just because we have the delete geometry. So if we actually mute this, you can see what we have. And if we unmute it, you can also see by simply pressing M, you can see some beautiful things right here. So moving forward, there's also some updates within the geometry node that deals with the curve length node. So just in case you want to check this one out, you can also do well to check it out. And of course, there is a couple of updates within the Alembic and you might also want to come through and check this one out as well. And while we talk about things that you might want to check out, the Google Summer of Code has begun. And with that said, let's dive over and talk about some community stuff. So for those who are looking for free stuff, Right now, you'll be able to have fun going over to Grease Monkey. Check out some of the amazing and free stuff that Grease Monkey has actually made for free. So there is the free Blender FX hologram material, which you can get, and there is actually more stuff. So in case you're looking for free, you know, Blender FX energy materials, some tune shaders, you're looking for things like this, all of these are totally free and you can come through and grab it now for those who are looking for things like you know rain materials of course you'll be able to get this one as well and while we talk about things that you'll be able to get we've already mentioned this one before and it's also very interesting to see that julio Siliette also has some very nice updates to the free stuff that he has consistently given out so in case you're looking for a material pack that deals with fabric or maybe you're looking for some facades or you're looking for some holiday materials these things are right here and you can do well to grab them for free and of course for those that are super excited about the blender community right now the blender community website is under construction and this is supposed to be available right now but this is going to be available later on Sunday, June the 13th. So just in case you want to check up on the Blender community, you want to see some of the updates that will be happening to the website, you can simply go over there and check it out. And of course, before we go, let's give a huge shout out to JSLAV for actually making the Simply add-on bundle. So for those who like to get the Simply Clothes Pro, or maybe you'd like to get the Simply Mesh and you want to check out the Simply Concept, which is a brand new tool that he has just released, link to this as well is going to be in the description. So do well to to check it out and that's more like it a huge shout out to the folks at blender foundation for making this possible and for those who like to take a look at these all of these links are going to be in the description and of course if you have free stuff that will be beneficial to the blender community simply join us on discord and make that public or shoot us an email and we'll do well to share it with the community tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section and of course if you like this video or you like something from this you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend and if you're new here, it's going to be amazing for you to hit the subscribe button and also turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next video or the next update. And until I see you guys again with the tutorial update, free Friday, tutorial Tuesday, tips and tricks, things like this. Peace.